Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q2 FY24 conference call of Amara Raja Energy and Mobility Limited, hosted by Valorium Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Sonpal, CEO at Valorium Advisors. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Sonpal. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anuj Sonpal from Valorium Advisors. We represent the investor relations of Amara Raja Energy and Mobility Limited. On behalf of the company, I'd like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the second quarter and first half of financial year 2024. Before we begin, I'd like to mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Y. Dilly Babu, um, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, without any further delay, I request Mr. Babu to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anish. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone who is on the call. Thanks for your time. Uh, the current quarter has seen a consolidated revenue growth of about 9.5% on by over basis, backed up by the new energy volumes that have grown, apart from the growth in the four-wheeler and two-wheeler segment. Uh, when we look at the lead acid business on a standalone basis, the revenue growth is about 6.4% uh, on by over basis. Uh, this is coming on the back of a volume growth that we have seen in the four-wheeler segment about 7% and the two-wheeler segment about 9%. And the other applications on the inverter batteries, we have seen a degrowth about 11% considering the lack of manufacturing volumes while substantial portion is uh, supplied through our uh, uh, trading back, trading of the tubular batteries. Uh, within the four-wheeler segments, we have seen robust growth in the aftermarket, uh, uh, which have grown around 8% or so, while we have seen the OEMs and exports had a subdued growth during the current quarter at about 3 to 4%. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, in the export segment, there were some shipment delays considering the name change that we have done, and there were certain custom that got a bit delayed, but it is not a sales loss, it's only a postponement to the next quarter. So we are seeing good traction on the export volumes as well. So in the two-wheeler side, uh, while the aftermarket has grown about 12 to 13 percent, the OEM growth has been uh, uh, subdued at about 2 to 3 percent. Uh, that's culminated into the overall revenue growth of about 6 and a half percent on the uh, regular lead-acid battery business. Uh, the new energy business during the current quarter have actually more than doubled its revenue compared to the previous year. Uh, we have seen good volume growth both in the uh, chargers as well as uh, the battery packs that we are supplying for three-wheeler uh, uh, and other storage requirements. Uh, there has been a significant volume growth, so that's where the overall revenue for the new energy business for the first half year has almost crossed the full year revenue of last year. On the margin side, yes, there has been an improvement in the overall margins, considering the better uh, realizations and also a bit of savings on the raw material side. Uh, the other expenses you would have observed there is a growth uh, in the other expenses because of uh, three major factors. One is uh, because of the fire uh, incident, the insurance premiums are shot up, which I have explained even in our earlier earnings call. That continues to be an issue in all the four quarters. And also there were certain uh, 
uh, throughput enhancement projects and cost reduction projects that we have taken up. So we are incurring certain consultancy charges, which is also coming and come in and then hit the PNL during the current quarter. Uh, those and uh, there were certain provisioning that we had to make towards the warranty expenses. So these are some of the issues that have caused the increase in the other expenses, but otherwise uh, all other expenses are with, in line with the uh, volume growth what we have seen. Uh, as far as uh, the other uh, um, uh, updates are concerned, uh, we have completed the acquisition of Hammer Raja Power Systems Limited, which is a charger manufacturing uh, unit. Uh, this company has also entered into a technology uh, development agreement for uh, other range of chargers um, for uh, both the two-wheeler as well as three-wheeler applications and also the uh, storage applications. This uh, technology agreement will also help us increase the uh, local value addition and thereby it will improve the overall uh, charging solution capability within this organization. Uh, the plastics business integration, uh, which we have started uh, uh, about uh, 10 months ago, is almost at its tag uh, end. Expected sometime in the month of November. And thereafter, we will be completing the integration of the plastic component business with uh, Amar Raja batteries. Uh, <clears throat> apart from this, uh, there were a couple of queries that we have received on me. Let me respond to that. Uh, uh, the recycling plant that is in the subsidiary of Amar Raja Circular Solutions Private Limited uh, is expected to commence its, its uh, production in the first phase. The overall uh, Capacity of the plant planned in two phases is about 1,50,000 metric tons. Uh, the first phase of 1 lakh metric tons is expected to commence the production sometime in the month of, uh, in the first quarter of next financial year. Uh, that should help us increase the overall recycling uh, material quantum, uh, what we use for uh, uh, recycling quantum of uh, lead material within the total requirement, uh, what is required for Ramaraja energy and mobility. Uh, as far as uh, the fire accident is concerned, uh, we have now uh, completed uh, the lodging of uh, the inventory claim. Uh, we are expecting the claim process to complete in the next uh, one or two months, and uh, we are hopeful to recover all the loss uh, that has come in because of the uh, fire incident. Uh, with those uh, initial remarks, I will now open uh, for the questions from the participants. Um, Malcolm, over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomara. Go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Kapil. Yeah, uh, congratulations on a good set of results. Sir, before coming to results, I just uh, wanted to ask you that we have changed the name of the company, right? And we have, uh, we are saying, uh, you know, mobility is also a focus area. So uh, if you could just uh, talk a bit about it, you know, what all will be the target segments that we can incrementally look at? Uh, what What is the re rationale behind this change? Uh, see, uh, from a simple uh, uh, battery manufacturing, I think the idea is to look at solutions around energy, both for the storage as well as the mobility applications uh, across the segments. I think when we are looking at uh, our new energy business, from the point of uh, manufacturing the films, chargers, as well as uh, packs, we are trying to look at all the energy solutions related to the mobility as well as storage. So in order to imply the right strategy, as you know, we have articulated about a couple of years ago in terms of how do we uh, effectively get into the new energy business at the same time maximizing the value of the uh, existing business. So in line with that strategy, the idea is 
uh, on the both these major application segments one is the storage the other is the mobility how do we become an energy storage solutions provider across both these segments to reflect that uh, the new journey that we have coined i think the name got changed so as of now uh, if you are indicating to me that whether we are getting into any uh, vehicle manufacturing i don't think that is the idea it is to convey that <clears throat> the, we are looking at pouring into uh, uh, expanding our uh, footfold into the solutions related to energy which is both for the storage as well as the mobility applications okay sir thanks sir uh, that's understood uh, just uh, you know coming to company's performance usually we have seen that uh, you know uh, amaraja especially the oem segment growth has been ahead of the industry but uh, and we have you know always talked of market share gains so this quarter i see that that's not really the case so if you could just talk us through in terms of market share uh, uh, on the oem side uh, where are we or how are we looking at growth as we go ahead uh, do you think we will be gaining market share as we move ahead See, as far as uh, the oem segment is concerned our uh, uh, strategy is not undergoing any change so as we have said the market share assessments we do at the end of every year so last year uh, our assessment is that we should be around 35 36% of the market share and even this year i think by the time we close the year we should be around the same number if not better uh, so as such there is no change the current quarter depending on what vehicle platforms that we have been participating in some of the volumes there could be a minor uh, dip compared to the overall oem production our sales might have taken a bit of a, a dip but that is only a, a current quarter challenge i don't think that uh, that is any reflection of any change in our uh, overall market share aspirations as far as oems are concerned sure sir and uh, if you could talk of the growth outlook for each of the segments going ahead uh, what kind of growth are you expecting uh, moving ahead and also if you could cover other business revenue segment in that i i notice it uh, you mentioned around 150 crores uh, is this include does this include the new energy business as well yeah uh, the uh, other business segment predominantly is new energy business uh, for the h1 we would have reached the revenue size of about 240 crores and the quarter end as uh, question we have done about 150 or crores of revenue Uh, that is where i was mentioning this revenue is almost equal to what we have done in the full year of last year because we have carved this out into a subsidiary in uh, sometime in the month of uh, july so that's where we, this is the first quarter where you see that the new energy revenues are appearing in a separate segment as compared to the legacy led asset business in a separate segment uh, as far as growth momentum is concerned both in the aftermarket uh, side of four wheeler as well as two wheeler Uh, we are seeing uh, market growth rates around 6 to 7 percent in the aftermarket in four wheeler, as I mentioned in the earlier calls as well. And in the same manner, in the two wheeler, in the lower double digits, we are seeing the growth. And uh, our growth has been pretty robust uh, in the, both the aftermarket segments. I don't think there is any uh, significant change uh, in that growth numbers. Uh, as far as uh, the industrial business is concerned we are seeing a reasonable growth in the upas side of the business at about 7 to 8% kind of a growth that is stable uh, yes telecom like i mentioned in our uh, last call as well we are seeing certain uptick in the demand because of the 5g network expansion etc uh, that has continued even into this quarter uh, which is where uh, the overall industrial business also has grown about 8 9% level so in terms of the led asset battery growth momentum i don't see any significant challenges at this point of time uh, in the new energy business i know we are currently dealing with chargers and three wheeler battery packs and some of the uh, telecom storage uh, battery packs we are hopeful that we will expand the uh, new energy business into other vehicle segments and other storage segments in the coming future uh, so that, that that's what is the summary of uh, how we are looking at the business now and sir lastly if you could talk about the profitability in the new energy business will it be close to double digits already 
see it is too early to comment because our new energy business is currently is only the pack manufacturing and also the charger manufacturing both you know are highly uh, price competitive so at this point of time we are able to see some margins in the range of 7 to 8% as a overall margin number but uh, going forward when we increase the uh, uh, overall revenue i think we will still be able to sustain those kind of numbers as far as the pack business is concerned but when we indigenize more and more charger manufacturing there is a possibility of improving uh, the overall uh, margins in the new energy business uh, so i think i would uh, before creating a benchmark for this uh, on margins for this business i would wait for some more time uh, but as of now uh, we are finding because uh, the sell prices are also in a reasonable range and then uh there is a reasonable comfort uh, in terms of the raw material pricing but i think i'm sure uh, considering the b2b business it is so i would wait for some more time before we put uh, a kind of a benchmark on margins for the new energy business uh thank you sir uh, i'll come back in the queue and wish you all the best thank you thank you before we take the next question a request to all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant because we have other participants in the queue the next question is from the line of aditya jawar from investec please go ahead sir yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, sir if you can you know uh, talk us about uh, the lithium ion battery and you know, how are we thinking in terms of technology uh, in house versus log nine uh, and you know partnership with global companies and if you can add to that that when you are engaging in conversation with oem what is the response of these oems with our you know different approach specifically with regard to technology on lithium ion sir see but i have mentioned earlier as well so there is uh, a plan that is clearly laid out as far as the two major chemistries of nmc and lsp are concerned we have told you that there is an in house development on nmc and then we are working with that and other people as far as the lsp product development is concerned but that does not uh, mean to say that we are not open for any larger partnerships yes there is some work that's happening on that front as well as and when something comes up we will definitely update you uh, but right now we are not waiting for that to happen i think there is a good amount of investment that's happening within the company to develop capabilities around uh, these two chemistries and also see to it that our plan of going for commercial production sometime in fy 26 with the uh, first 2 gigawatt hour line are uh, achieved so to that extent the efforts are on uh, so if and when we are able to uh, structure a relationship with any of the global uh, battery makers that will be uh, definitely be looked at as far as oems is concerned we are working with uh, we are at least discussing with multiple oems at this point of time for different uh, different vehicle categories there are different uh, battery requirements are being stated so there are few who are talking about making packs on their own so i think it is still uh, i won't be able to say so and so oem is asking for so and so kind of battery i think it's a progressive working that's going on with multiple uh, people at this point of time i'm sure as and when some uh, uh, specific uh, arrangements are agreed upon we'll be able to share those details and that's helpful sir so the sir, next question is you know if you can sir remind us on timeline of our capex spend uh, for the giga factory you mentioned that fy26 we will have a uh, 2 gigawatt and you know overall we have a plan of about 16 so how is the capex spend planned in over the next few year and how are we thinking about funding See, as far as new energy business is concerned, uh, as I have articulated earlier, there are three uh, major projects. One is setting up our uh, research hub, which is happening uh, near the Hyderabad International Airport, and then there is the second one, which is the customer qualification plant, which is to make uh, all the form factors and chemistries at a mega scale, so that that can be. Uh, extrapolated to a giga scale in the giga factory, and third is the first two gigawatt hour NMC line that we want to put up, where we are looking at starting the commercial production sometime in FY26. That's the current target that is there in place. Towards these three projects, the initial outlay to be spent over next two to three years time frame 
is about 1500 odd crores which we think in fy 24 uh, we have completed the land acquisition and the construction have just started so we may have to spend in fy 24 of another 100 to 150 odd crores and then next year the equipment purchase and all other things we, the orders are getting uh, uh, placed now so we will have another 500 to 600 crores capex being spent next year and a similar amount thereafter that's the plan as far as the new energy is concerned as far as lead acid battery is concerned i think uh, uh, we will continue to have a regular capex of about 150 odd crores and then there is another 200 to 300 crores of uh, the line expansions that we will do in our existing factory and any new greenfield uh, uh, if at all there is greenfield capacity requirement comes up at that time, I'll update you if there is a further capex requirement is going to be there or not. Okay, okay. So that's it from my side. I'll call back into you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan from Nuwama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, on the result side, I uh, just wanted to get a couple of numbers from you. Uh, one, can you share the telecom growth for the quarter? And uh, you indicated that consultancy fee was also incurred in uh, this quarter in other expenses. So that is not likely to repeat in coming quarters. So uh, what would be that uh, one-off amount, sir? Yeah, uh, uh, from a telecom growth point of view, on a volume basis, it has grown around uh, nine to ten percent uh, during the current quarter. Uh, Raju, uh, as far as the expenses are concerned, uh, these charges what we are incurring uh, around uh, ten crores or so uh, may not recur uh, going forward of the uh, two amounts that I have indicated, but rest will be there uh, as an expense. Understood, sir. And uh, in terms of building the new energy business, uh, you know, uh, have you started the efforts of, uh, you know, like uh, showing the product capabilities to the OEMs? And, you know, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, if FI26, the plant is coming up, by when would uh, the tie-ups with OEMs get finalized? As you know, there are no specific uh, tie-ups that are generally done in our uh, ecosystem. It is generally you work on a particular product development and then as and when uh, that becomes commercially acceptable to both the parties, the supplies will start. So while I can't disclose uh, some of these discussions at this point of time, because right now you know we are dealing with a couple of OEMs uh, on the three-wheeler side and two-wheeler side, uh, and also on the storage side, we are dealing with some of the telecom players. Uh, as and when there are uh, certain specific agreements that are getting entered in the form of a supply agreement, because generally supply agreements are entered only when the form of supply is agreed between both the parties. So I think I would wait for some more time uh, before I can actually come and uh, discuss those specifics in these calls. Uh, it, it would take some more time for me to come back. Got it, sir. And any progress on that uh, PLI scheme? Uh, because uh, that 20 gigawatt hour was supposed to be again, uh, uh, you know, like uh, offered to the players. So, so would you be participating in that, or do you find the conditions of the PLI scheme restrictive? Uh, I don't think as of now the specific conditions are out, but if the uh, conditions that are going to be laid out in the second round that they are going to come in, uh, they are uh, reasonable for us to think that it will help the overall uh, uh, business work. Definitely, we will not hesitate to participate in. But we would, uh, for me to answer an SR no for this, I would wait for uh, the scheme. Once it is out, then definitely we can discuss that. Uh, any timeline there, sir? I'm sorry to uh, interrupt you, Mr. Raghunandan. Um, there are other participants uh, waiting in the queue. I would request sure, you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. 
The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Dulak Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, how is the pricing trend for uh, lead and non-lead RM like separate and plastic parts? And uh, have you taken any price hike in aftermarket uh, in last quarter? Uh, there were no price hikes uh, taken in the last quarter in the aftermarket Abhishek and uh, the raw material prices are fairly stable between first quarter and the second quarter. While we are seeing uh, some uptick in the lead uh, number uh, of late and also a currency depreciation that has happened, I think uh, we will see whether that will uh, have an impact on our overall scheme of things. Accordingly, the pricing decisions will be taken. Uh, but as of now, uh, the raw material prices, at least for the last uh, two quarters, have been fairly stable, and uh, we are not seeing a, a serious challenge around it. So, despite the higher revenue from this uh, new energy business and fall in uh, uh, export uh, volumes, uh, this quarter we have seen a gross margin expansion. Is, is it because of the products mix change, uh, especially for the aftermarket growth uh, in this quarter? See, I, I wouldn't call uh, export volume uh, uh, fall and all. Definitely, they have grown compared to what we have done last year. Uh, so, I think uh, the tightening issue in terms of some of the shipments will get evened out as we move into the next quarter. Uh, so, as far as margin expansion is concerned, if you see on one side, we have a higher trading volume. For example, in the current quarter, our trading revenue is about 11% and our, our manufacturing revenue is about 89% on a, when you look at it on a standalone basis. Even on consolidated, maybe a 1% change will be there. So in that sense, uh, uh, just because there is a minor reduction in the OEM mix, I don't think it is going to have a very significant impact on the margin profile. I think the uh, initiatives that are taken on the material cost reduction and uh, some of the expense controls is definitely giving us some dividends. And also uh, some of the realizations uh, that are uh, also are helping uh, the overall profitability. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from MOFSL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Mr. Babu. So a couple of questions from my side. Uh, you indicated that exports uh, have started to see growth uh, on last year's base. Uh, are we uh, seeing total normalization of our export volumes? Uh, are we growing on high base, uh, which we have seen till, say, 1Q last year, or uh, it is growth on a lower base? I think last year base was also uh, reasonably higher. It is not that uh, last year base was lower. Uh, we are seeing growth, but uh, uh, in this quarter, we had a blip considering uh, some of the clearances. But otherwise, so they are on a clear growth trajectory of 10 to 11 percent or 10 to 15 percent that we have been talking about. I think even this year, on a full year basis, we will see a double digit growth in the export volumes as well. Okay, okay. And uh, secondly, on uh, you indicated about the lead prices have started to inch up in 3Q. Uh, and uh, that's fairly reasonable. I think it's almost 8 to 10 percent higher than the 2Q average. Uh, so in that context, uh, given that we haven't seen a material price increase in replacement market for, I think, over 12 to 15 months now, uh, any uh, you think this can be passed through to the customers now, or demand is not as strong uh, as what we would have liked to before we take price increases? Price increase decision is definitely, you know, in the aftermarket, it's, a, it's not a dynamic of only cost. It's also about how the competition is behaving. Uh, so uh, once we see a trend getting established, generally we have seen industry has taken the uh, price increases. I don't think it will be any different uh, even now. So I think whether a price increase will happen in Q3 or not is something that I will not be able to comment at this point of time. But at a sustained elevated lead levels, we have always been taking those price increases, but there will always be that lead and lag uh, uh, in these decisions. Got it. Got it. Oh, great. I'll come back in key. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Mukesh Sara from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Yes, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. 
just some uh, bookkeeping questions. So, uh, last quarter you had mentioned that uh, the power cost was higher by about 10 to 15 crores, and uh, there are some efforts being taken to reduce these costs. Uh, have we already started seeing some benefit of these efforts, uh, or, or it's going to take some more time? Yes, Mukesh, I think uh, last quarter we had seen certain levies by the government uh, in terms yeah. of electricity duty and all. So that is partially compensated because now our solar plant has also started uh, generating the energy and we are now getting the settlements in a uh, particular periodicity. So that is definitely mm -hmm. given us uh, the cushion. So that's where in this quarter compared to the previous year, we have not seen a very significant jump beyond, I mean, after adjusting for the increase in the volumes, we have not seen a substantial jump in the power cost. All right, okay. And uh, I, in, the, in the raw material cost, we do see uh, inventory build up. Uh, if I look at it, uh, it's about 150 crores, 145 crores in the standard numbers. Uh, so, I mean, this is just a, a kind of a seasonality here, or I mean, uh, could you explain this thing and mention it? Yeah, uh, see, I think this, you, you know, generally Q3 will definitely be a uh, sure. place where we will see extra demand coming up considering the winter season. There are certain inventories that got built up, and also some of the export clearances also has okay. made uh, some of these inventories higher. Uh, I think that will come back to normalcy by the end of Q3, uh, as usual. Right. And just the last thing on in, uh, the insurance claim, I think you had said 100 crores is what we have received so far, and the balance we'll receive in this uh, second or third quarter. So any more uh, amount we have received on the insurance claims? No, that, that 100 crores is what we have received, but we have also now whatever the lead that could be recycled uh, what was there in the factory has also been recycled. So that I think we were able to recover roughly about 85 to 90 crores out of that. And also there were some uh, amounts that were realized on debris clearance. So roughly we can say another 90 crores is recovered through the uh, material uh, uh, recycling. And the rest we are we are confident that we'll collect those claims from the insurance. Perfect. Okay. Great. So thank you. I'll give back to you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parv Jain from Niveshe Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just a few questions on EPR front. So you mentioned about recycled materials uh, during your presentation. Can you please repeat the figures? See, we are setting up a, a recycling plant for lead acid batteries with an eventual capacity of 1,50,000 tons. Uh, in the first phase, we'll be having a capacity of 1 lakh tons, uh, which will be used captively by uh, the battery manufacturer. So we'll be collecting these batteries uh, from the uh, channel, and then these recycled batteries will be processed within the Amaraja Circular Solutions subsidiary. So, so these batteries is generally available batteries in the market, or particularly our batteries? Yeah, see, the way scrap is procured is not necessarily our own batteries. Generally, the retailers pull up other brands as well. It is not that it is only the our batteries. It can be other brands as well. Okay, and uh, what is the primary usage of recycled material? Our own consumption or resale? Yeah, it will be 100% own consumption. Uh, even today, uh, we, we use a lot of recycled lead. Because lead acid batteries are uh, almost recyclable up to 95%, if not more, because you can recycle the plastic, you can recycle the entire lead. So it is, this, is, this is one of the most recyclable products. So in that way, currently we are using almost like uh, 60 to 70% of lead and alloy requirement through the recycled material. Once we go through our own smelting unit, uh, that percentage will only increase. So. Uh, once we put up our uh, 1 lakh tons capacity, that plant itself should give us roughly about 25 to 30% of our overall requirement. Rest we will continue to procure from other smelters as well as the virgin lead producers like uh, IJT. And sir, what is the cost advantage that we are seeing here, Matlab, with this procuring a primary lead versus recycled lead? See, from a uh, procurement side, from external uh, smelters, all the lead is generally linked to the LME, so you will not see a significant cost difference. But when we do our own recycling based on our uh, project estimates, we see that there could be at least uh, 
for the saving of what 1 to 2% on the overall material cost uh, that's what is our estimate because we are setting up uh, one of the best technology around uh, recycling so that should help us give some uh, raw material edge but we have to understand one more thing that in india the scrap prices generally move in line with what the lme moves and also in the seasons of tubular batteries you see that the scrap prices sometimes even shoot up more than what uh, uh, the lme benchmark is so in that sense that that uh, price volatility of scrap batteries also have to be factored in uh, if you observe all other listed smelters the profitability numbers you must be already aware so i think there will be some level of cost reduction because we will also be reprocessing the plastic granules and then we'll be using them in our uh, uh, you know that we are acquiring the plastic component business that should also give us some uh, cost advantage so at this point of time my estimate is on uh, the lead material cost we may see about 1 to 2% of cost advantage but i would wait once we run the factory at least for a couple of quarters i think we can uh, say with confidence as to how much is the possible material cost savings just one last thing uh, what is the expected timeline for this uh, setup we are expecting to start the commercial production of this recycling unit sometime in the uh, first quarter of next financial year okay sir thank you and congrats thanks thank you thank you, thank you. the next question is from the line of vibhav zuchi from jp morgan please go ahead Yes, uh, good afternoon, sir, and thanks for take, taking my questions. Uh, my first question is on the new energy business. Uh, so during your fourth year call, you had mentioned that this year you could see around 750 crores of revenue growing three times uh, that of FY23. So uh, would be would, would we be still on that target? Any thoughts? Uh, uh, you know, to actually uh, to see further ramp up. that was uh, a possibility that i have quoted uh, by the we may or uh, may not go closer to that number but i am sure uh, we should because now that the first half has uh, almost uh, hit the last year's full number uh, i am i am confident that we will be at least uh, doubling the last year number if not more okay got it got it and in your presentation i am seeing omega city as uh, you know a partner so is this like a new partnership that you have won uh, over the over the recent past no uh, uh, these, these are i mean you know that we are supplying the uh, two three wheeler oems or battery packs so we have started supplying to them as well okay okay got it uh, and my second question is basically you know your announcement uh, you know on uh, entering into you know the lubricants business i think early in september you had launched a new product so just wanted to get some thoughts around you know this business uh, you know do you have plans to scale it up uh, and how should we think about the capex uh, going forward uh, and you know how does this tie into into the synergy you know uh, that that you are driving yeah you would uh, recollect that as part of our uh, value maximization strategy we have said that uh, all the assets that we have on the legacy lead asset business have to be uh, Uh, uh i mean used more effectively so naturally channel is one of our big assets and we felt uh, there is a possibility of selling other allied products through this channel so that both the value for the channel as well as value for the company is maximized so that's where uh, the loops came in as one of the product that we thought uh, we can uh, participate in so the initially idea is we are doing trading on these loops for uh, two wheeler four wheeler as well as the trucks and tractors so in as part of uh, optimizing the channel capability uh, in one sense this will also help uh, expanding our channel as well because now we will be touch basing even those uh, sole lubricant points as well which may become one of the potential uh, battery sellers as well so that way i think it should actually augment our uh, channel as well so right now the thought process is to see what are those allied products which will actually help us uh, grow uh, and also uh, help the channel to grow their uh, overall business so that's where we have started this uh, going forward uh, we'll come back if at all right now the capex investment into this is very meager uh, except for few bowls that we invest in uh, so there is no great capital that we are putting behind this business So, if at all there are any plans around it, we will come back and share it with you. Okay, thank you, Lord. I'll come back in the team. Yeah. Thank you. 
the next question is from ayush mittal from mittal analytics please go ahead uh you are from so am i audible yes yes you are audible good afternoon yeah yeah yes, sir so first question from my side is uh, more about the growth in our core uh, uh, legacy battery business uh, one what is the after market number that we would be having as of now and given that we see that the uh, number of vehicles keep piling what kind of growth rate are we seeing in this uh, segment for us because uh, uh, growth rate of 6 7% overall looks a bit low uh, so i'm trying to understand more about the consistent growth for us when we look at uh, the vehicle segments we know the oems were sluggish in the last two two and a half years naturally uh, the fleet size growth is definitely limited on account of uh, lower volume growth that we have seen in the oems that will definitely play how the aftermarket grows uh, with about two and a half to three years kind of a lag so uh, at this point of time we see that on a full year basis the aftermarket for four wheelers may be in the higher single digits that is around uh, 7 to 8% on the optimistic side and maybe about 6 to 7% on the pessimistic side and the two wheelers we are seeing uh, uh, lower double digit growth around 12 13% kind of an after market growth is being seen as a two wheeler segment okay okay and this is what is the sustainable thing you feel sorry uh, this is the sustainable number you feel yes yes So, second question I keep wondering is uh, that uh, recently a partner uh, pulled out a big chunk of equity, but there was no participation from the promoters. Any thoughts on that, and why we are not uh, thinking of buyback or something at some point of time? Yeah, I think uh, the exit of uh, Brookfield, uh, because after Janssen Controls exited their power solutions business, Brookfield was a financial investor. it's a decision that they have taken as part of their global strategy so at that point of time uh, there was no direct purchase that had happened by uh, the promoters so we will decisions around other uh, buyback or any other uh, um, capital allocation decisions are a matter of a continuous debate it is not that we are ruling out anything at this point of time we will take those because as a business we are also investing heavily into the new energy business so once we see the cash flow sustenance uh, the management is on a constant review of all these matters with respect to the capital allocation we'll come back to you as and when a specific decision is taken around it okay okay thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Gaurav Nigam from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, sir, my first question was on. I just wanted to understand uh, uh, how the auto OEM volumes and uh, uh, Amara's uh, uh, OEM segment volumes are correlated. Because one thing is uh, very clearly visible in the market is that higher price products are going more and Uh, there is a muted volume growth in the lower price segments in both two wheeler and uh, four wheeler segment so does it have any implication on the uh, amara's auto oem volume growth see the oem uh, platforms uh, whenever we participate it does not uh, uh, say that we will only participate in certain segments and we don't participate in others so it is like there are certain vehicle platforms sometimes uh, the shares will differ Uh, how much is given to one player with or with other so beyond those operational uh, details i don't think there is any change in our overall strategy of participating in the oems we are participating in almost all the oems as of now uh, mm-hmm. we are even trying to uh, in in some of the oems which are now working on an agm battery we are also now ready with the product and we are now trying to work with those oems to uh, provide the agm battery as well so in that sense be it on the product development be it on uh, participating in as many vehicle platforms that we can there is no change in our stance uh, i think uh, the idea to grow the market share within the range what we have set for ourselves will continue so just a Uh, clarification you are saying that overall volume growth of the industry should broadly mirror the auto oem volume growth for amara yeah 
is that correct understanding based on this statement yes yes on a clear basis yes but there could yeah. be uh, minor deviations always that's fair that's fair understood and sir second question was on that sorry sorry to interrupt you uh, we have other participants with you can i request i just pass one question sorry go ahead yeah uh, so this one question on the lithium ion batteries uh, sir i understand you are planning for fi26 Uh, but from the design perspective, who are we targeting as a customer segment? Is it two-wheeler, three-wheeler, or four-wheeler? And are these capacities fungible in nature that we can do uh, any kind of uh, uh, end-user segment? And do we need to have MOU in place uh, before we do the FI 26 capit- uh, capital commitment? Just wanted to understand perspective on that. Initially, the NMC cells are going to be used in a two-wheeler product. There is also a possibility that some of the three wheelers may also use the NMC product. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, secondly, as far as fungibility is concerned, from a chemistry point of view, they are reasonably fungible. There may be a requirement of a minor capital addition, but uh, only when it comes to the form factor, there could be an additional capex that we may have to uh, spend. But otherwise. when we want to change from mmc to lsc there may not be a significant capex penalty so but as such in our long term view uh, at least at this point of time we believe lsc chemistry will have almost a 60% kind of a uh, share whereas mmc chemistry may have about uh, 30 35% and rest could be with the other uh, chemistries that can come in so in that sense we don't see a great capital Uh, risk around the initial uh, investment what we are making both from a chemistry point of view as well as from an application segment point of view got it got it and sir uh, your answer on the mou is that required for fi26 um, like capital commitment or that we will do it as and when it comes i i think see so the in a b2b scenario at this point of time i don't have any specific mou that i can share with you but these are ongoing discussions as and when things come to a shape we'll let you understood sir thank you thank you sir for answering the question thank you thank you so much thank you very much the next question is from the line of sandeep dikshit from argov partners please go ahead hey, thank you very much Uh, I just had two questions. The number one, you had mentioned that there's some kind of a one-off in the cost or expenses in this water. Is it possible to compute? Yeah, I think I have mentioned that about 10 crores could be the one-off item in the expenditure because there are some specific projects that are running. So once those projects are done, we may not incur it in the subsequent quarters. Thank you. The second question was. Um, we haven't seen your margins go back to the 15-16 percent levels that we used to enjoy. Uh, is this some structural change that we have to live with this 13 percent kind of a 12-13 percent level? Uh, can we expect to go back to 15-16 in the next two, in two years or so? Yeah, like like we discussed in some of our previous calls as well. Uh, if you align the margin percentages with the lead cost. For example, we have seen 16, 17% debita margins also when the lead was around 1 lakh 50,000 or even less. I think we have seen 1 lakh 35,000 also in some quarters. So when you have uh, such low level lead uh, levels, naturally the denominator impact itself will play, and then you see that though you make the same amount of money on per battery produced, you are suddenly your margin percentages will appear bigger. so we have seen from there the leg moving uh, up to about 2 lakh rupees level so we have been mentioning that we can uh, we are from an internal process efficiency improvement or maybe realization improvement point of view we can look at that kind of a 15 16 kind of an ebitda margin around when the leg is around 1 lakh 75 1 lakh 80000 level but now we are though we are at about 2 lakh uh, level we have now in the current quarter we reached about 13.8% or so so the idea is how do we increase our margin quality though the let underlying lead rate is constantly increasing so that effort is on so it is not that we can uh, completely delink the lead price level vis-a-vis the margin profile where we are at so i think if we adjust for it i think i'm sure we are having the 
the same amount of money uh, for every uh, ton of lead processed, subject to some product mix uh, changes. Okay, so then should I be actually looking at such an absolute EBITDA per battery rather than looking at it in terms of percentages? Is that what you imply? Yeah, from a from a efficiency measurement point of view, yes, I would feel that is the right metric. But the effort is to see how do we increase the percentage as well. Okay, then what would that number be? Sorry. What would that number be in terms of EBITDA per battery? See, these are uh, measured at each application segment separately. I don't think we will talk uh, those numbers here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir. So taking into account our first half growth numbers, uh, what should we anticipate going into H2? These are sustainable numbers in terms of the revenue and the profitability. What should be extrapolated? want to leave a guidance here, but I think on an overall basis, uh, on a full year basis, we can uh, think about considering the industry growth rates, what we are seeing, a 10% revenue growth is possible. At this so when you were answering regarding our insurance claim part and the uh, other income component, do, have we accrued any amount uh, for this first half? Sir? I, I missed your comment. I think 80-90 crore or some figure you mentioned. So can you repeat the same once again? See, the claim amount received is 100 crores. The uh, inventory recycled is about 80, 90 crores. So they are yeah. not part of the other income. So they go as part of uh, the claim receivable that is already recognized in the last year. So they do not form the part of the uh, PNL. That is, these are all operational numbers. Yes, PNL. Yes, yes, PNL. You will not see the impact of the insurance claim because last year itself, because the fire accident occurred in January 2023, so last year itself, those uh, claims and recognition of the claim receivable has been completed. Right. And last second point was regarding this uh, the telecom investment pipeline. Sir, uh, if you could give us some color, what what was the uh, ask from the uh, telecom uh, companies, especially in terms of the replacement demand and also in terms of new tower being uh, erected for 5G deployment, or uh, if you could give us some more color, what's the ask from them? See, right now, uh, uh, some of the 5G deployment, the base tower stations are also getting strengthened, so that's where there is a requirement of additional batteries over there. Uh, but uh, going forward, yes, this sector is also susceptible for uh, chemistry change, so the storage side, if the lithium prices were to be uh, coming in a particular range, then that we could see that penetration happening even in the telecom level. But at this point of time, there is uh, reasonable demand for the lead acid uh, telecom batteries. Uh, we have been using our capacities uh, almost to the level of 85-90% kind of utilization, which was earlier around 75% kind of utilization. Uh, so we see this demand might sustain for at least next, next couple of years. And uh, we have to wait and see how the new chemistry will uh, come in in terms of its price on uh, per kilowatt hour. And based on that, the uh, migration to the new technologies may happen. Wait, if, if I may squeeze in this small point. So when we look at the investment cycle or the investment phase where the company is currently and the amount of cash being generated since we are net cash success company, uh, how, what should investors, investing community should the look as a company as a whole for say three four years down the line and the incremental cash generation even post the capex that have been announced how, how should we look say four five years down the line as uh, as the name says uh, amra raja what what should be uh, sorry, yes. so sorry to interrupt you but uh, due to time constraint can you um, join the conference the, uh, i just put forward my point it's up to the marriage no issue i i put forward my point that has hurt me okay, that I, I understand. Yeah, see, Sitrama, the overall capital allocation point of view, uh, how we should think, 
uh, is definitely a question that we uh, grapple with on a daily basis because the investments into the new energy business are quite sizable. Uh, and it is also not necessary that the entire additional cash accrual of the legacy business will be totally used for this capex either to uh, put up capex for the legacy business or for uh, the new energy business. At certain point of time when there is, uh, it is, how do we fund the new energy business? What's the right uh, uh, debt and equity mix that should be uh, there for the new energy business? This is a decision that we will we constantly evaluate. Uh, at this point of time, our idea is we should invest the initial uh, risk capital and then uh, make significant progress on some of the milestones that we have set for ourselves. Once we do that, then definitely the capital allocation decision is a matter of uh, 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 time. I think each, each quarter we need to review these decisions and accordingly the decisions have to be taken. I don't think I can say uh, any, any uh, uh, particular uh, formula for it at this point of time. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. We will, we will uh, continue the discussion later. Thank you. I now hand over the conference over to the management from Amara Raja Energy and Mobility Limited for closing comments. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I'm sure uh, a lot of you might have uh, many other questions and clarifications. Uh, we will definitely try and clarify them as much as uh, possible. It's always a pleasure to interact with all of you. Some of your questions are always add value to our thinking process. Uh, we welcome your questions. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it, it's a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of Amara Raja Energy and Mobility Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.